You know, the problem with our parents is that they are right. And he cannot correct a person who's right. Okay, let's do this. In three, two, one. It's Thrive Time. <laughs> Welcome and welcome back to Thrive Out Loud. I know, not my normal setup, but you have to make do with what you have. Abuti Eskon has decided to pay us a visit and well, um, here we are. So, like I said, welcome welcome, and welcome back to Thrive Out Loud. Nula, and as you can tell by the size of my smile, I am absolutely happy to be here. First things first, house shows in here. We like, we comment, we subscribe, click on the bell notifications, and remember to bring a friend to our family lunch because why don't you want to share nice things? So, I am so happy that I am getting back into the flow of things i know it's not my normal setup i'm in my lecture room and like i said as compared as a visit and <laughs> not sarah jakes roberts triggered me on the drive to work this morning and i wasn't planning on recording a video today or recording about this because obviously you know stuff just happens but normally when i drive to work um, i'd either play a podcast or i just listen to radio but it's normally my thinking time and inverted commas right so what i normally do because i i don't believe in coincidences i believe that things don't just happen and i normally just open my youtube app or open my spotify app and whatever that keeps on recurring because i'll just scroll through them then refresh whatever comes back then i was meant to really watch that or listen to it right so i did that and i saw the sermon triggered to uh, glory trigger Trigger what something about glory and triggering the main message that i got from that it even moved me to tears because how often do we operate from a position of being triggered and how often do we get triggered and run away from our triggers so today i just want us to have a little chat about triggers and hopefully it will all come full circle by the end of this video or maybe it would need a part two i don't know but how often do we operate from a position of being triggered could be triggered by anything by a situation by a person by a place by anything at all like it takes the smallest of things to trigger you and normally your triggers come from um a traumatic situation or traumatic thing like the reason you're triggered you're pulled back into that place is because there was a trauma of some sort that you associate with that thing person or place and something that reminds you of it sets you back into that same traumatic situation person thing whatever it is and that was not even the part her sermon she spoke about how sometimes god triggers you because the testimony you have now is a testimony you didn't have back then and you need the testimony now in order to pick up the pieces from back then i was just like like did not cut it out because what do you even mean sis what do you like what? you don't need to shout i can hear you loud and clear you don't need to shout but it just got me thinking man what a, Sometimes we run away from our triggers because obviously it's a painful thing and you're not trying to hurt yourself intentionally but other times we are just trying to protect ourselves but what is it that you're protecting yourself against? Of all the things that we are triggered by, how many of them are there to serve us, to help us heal or to you know make us realize the truth about ourselves? Because when she said that, it just... You know when you suddenly go blank for a moment and you're like, wait a minute. Dear Muslim. Dear Muslim. Then she went on to speak about how sometimes God triggers you so you can make your way back to that situation, place, or person that maybe was traumatic or traumatizing. Sometimes you get triggered in your today so you can go back to that thing that triggered you back then in your past so you can fix something, remedy something, and pick up pieces of yourself that you may have lived or forgotten at that point of impact and you sis you don't need to shout i hear you loud and clear it moved me because 
Um, a couple of months ago, I started dealing in inverted commas with a situation that I had honestly removed myself from it entirely. Um, I hope once it's done, I'll be able to share like the ins and outs of it. But the gist is I had removed myself from a situation, place and person. And that situation, place and person remained a trigger to me in in the life i lived after that and having to take myself back to that person to that place and essentially to that situation as as, a, as in itself it was a trigger to me but sometimes you get triggered by a thing that happened in the past so that you can go back to that trigger and pick up the pieces of you that got lost in that and you I have been an emotional mess for the last couple of months and having to deal with that thing has been one of the most challenging things ever because Mina, I am a person who insists on removing myself from people and things. Hey, if it's not working, it's not working. I don't believe in pushing the skorokoro. Skorokoro, you leave it there on the yellow lane and you lock the car and you leave it because it doesn't want to work, right? I am all for protecting my peace. I'm all for like pouring back into things that pour into you, giving to things that give to you, like loving those who love you. I know the Bible says love those who hate you. I'm not here for that way now, I'm such as my point is me now. The way I have been operating is protect your peace at all costs. And I never in my wildest dreams thought I the person who has been hurt by this person's situation and place would have to be the one going back to that person's situation and place and as a way to remedy it. But today's sermon, not to butcher her words, but to summarize, she basically said, sometimes it takes you being traumatized by a thing or a person or a situation and it later on being triggered by it so you can go back and teach people a new way of living or teach people how to love or teach people how to interact with you know a different generation because essentially it's it's no lie that our generation our 90s babies maybe the 80s as well um are triggered and traumatized by the generations that came before because mental health and well-being was not really a thing that was taken seriously mental health and well-being it was your own business your own company and you know you, you you need not make it anyone's problem and then we got to today's day and age where we speak openly about our mental health our mental well-being our emotional health and well-being and we want to fix what's broken but the problem is that generation you know the problem with our parents is that they are right that is the problem. The problem with Bazali is that they are right. And you cannot correct a person who's right. But what I got from the message was the fact that in as much as my childhood was traumatic as a result of my mom's actions and words or inactions or nonverbal stuff, I essentially ran away from home. Long story short, I ran away from home because one day I left and never came back. And got triggered by that same situation somewhere along the way you know somewhere you hear about stuff that your mom is saying about you and it obviously hurts because this is your mom somewhere along the line you hear about stuff that your mom is doing like to you or you know on your behalf and that stuff hurts somewhere along the line you hear about a situation involving that said person and you're bound to get triggered by it because you're a human being how roboto and your emotions were never designed to be robotic and then in getting triggered by it, I used to run away from my triggers, you know. I would just lean into the negativity of it and just dwell on how this woman is just out to ruin my life and get me. That may be true or not, not my scumban. But what I got from the message is that the reason it may continuously be triggering for me is the fact that maybe I am the one who has to show a different way of loving a different way of parenting a different way of being an adult without hurting non-adults because the thing about our parents they are they are adults and we are kids forever and they seemingly can never see that changing they seemingly cannot see that one changing and I just got so triggered because for the last couple of months, I've been praying about it on like what to do because it, it's been getting worse. 
and i just didn't understand why because i was just keeping my peace keeping my distance why would you continue to chase down a person that is not fighting back why would you continue to fight a person that is not fighting back but then it is almost as if it's a confirmation your job is not to fight back your job is to change the narrative your job is to go back to the point of impact to collect the pieces of you that got stolen the childhood that got traumatized and shattered into pieces to get back the pieces of you that um like were broken by the stuff that happened to you as a child there's a part of my childhood that it just got broken there's a big chunk of my childhood that i can't recall to this day there's a big chunk of my high school years um and that was not very long ago but because there was so many traumatic events that occurred during that space my brain has literally like shut those out there's a big chunk of details that i just i can't remember sometimes you get a whiff of a smell and it takes you to that time but you can't really put anything to it you can't put a face um a time frame a day to it because your brain has blocked it out but in hearing this message it might be a bit of a ramble but how how often do we do we operate from a position of trigger you know because it's very easy or it could have been very easy for me in my triggered state to lean into negativity and fight back or lash back it could have been very easy for me to be a hurt person that continues to hurt other people i i know i know right now it's like i'm all up in your business but i just want to pose this to you like how often do you operate from a position of being triggered and what do your triggers drive you to are you leaning into them to try and confront what they're about or are you leaning out or running away from them because we're now you're all about protecting your peace either option i believe you're absolutely right you do what your soul needs from you at that time but this life not a balance but i don't think i have the necessary skills to open up those parts of me yet but i just think it is confirmation that at the end of the day it's a thing that needs to be done or it will be a vicious cycle that will continue to live on that's why in my previous video i touched on how we parent our kids or how, how we just generally interact with people how are you loving the people around you you know are you a person who takes accountability are you a person who loves openly are you a person who you just keep on throwing punch by punch blow by blow because when now you tell it like it is are you empathetic are you a person who's able to extend love to the next person like how are you dealing with the people around you in your journey in your life journey how are you as a person and i mirrored it down to parenting specifically because this is the part where you see how your actions directly impact a person because unlike your friend who you see um for a set period of time and then you both go your separate ways your child bro your child is stuck with you the thing that you did to them in the morning the way you spoke to them at lunchtime the way you were just so sharp with them and impatient with them at bedtime you get to see the impacts in real time and hearing this message extended that for me Hore, then how, how often do we operate from a position of being triggered and what is it that we're doing about our triggers what triggers you and what are you doing about it are you leaning in or leaning out are you confronting your triggers or are you running away from them because you want to protect your peace but like i said either way you are right because you're doing what you need for yourself at this very moment okay this video was a bit all over the show but i had to get it out i'll see if i can attach a snippet of the sermon but i think it's triggered glory or something like that but i'll link it somewhere here but yo i had the most emotional car drive ever not me ruining my makeup before i even made it to work i hadn't all that to say sometimes the messages you there's messages and everything sometimes you feel like you just had an idea to speak to a certain person or to do a certain thing but i was sure because there's human ego as well that's making noise in our ear but there's messages everywhere whatever it is that your soul needs to hear whatever it is that your heart needs to hear you will hear it at just the right time and i'll leave you with this Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. Like I said, the setup is not normal, but we need to make do with what ESCOM allows us to do because I have a whole ring light, I have a whole thing, but 
here we are what's the point but thank you for tuning in and um, please remember the house shows in here we like we comment we subscribe click on the bell notifications and remember to bring a friend to our family meetings because the more they marry yeah anchor i'll see you next time bye <laughs>